Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Newsware Education. Um, we will solve a couple of very simple problems related to mechanical oscillations with damping effect of the friction. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens, presented on Unizor.com. Um, so, this is the website where, where I recommend you to watch this and all other lectures because it presents a course, which means it's a logical connection between different lectures. There is a menu which drives you in a logical sequence from one lecture to another, from one topic to another. Every lecture on this website has a very detailed notes, which basically can serve as a textbook. Um, the site is completely free. There are no advertisements, no strings attached at all. You don't even have to sign in if you don't want to. Um, uh, also, the same we website contains Mass for Teens uh, uh, course, which basically is a prerequisite for to the physics. You do have to know Mass. I'm using, uh, especially the calculus, I'm using um, differentials and uh, integrals uh, practically in most of the lectures. Physics is all about um, calculus, quite frankly. Okay, so damping effect of the frictions. Okay, consider we have the following problem. So you have a table, you have a spring attached to the wall and attached to the object. Now, uh, let's characterize the object with mass which is equal to 0 0.3 kilograms. I'm using the C units of measurements. Um, now, there is a spring has elasticity equal to 2 newton by meter, which means if you stretch it by meter, you will get 2 newtons um, force back to um, so uh, any any extension by certain amount of uh, certain distance um, will cause the spring force uh, multiplied by uh, two uh, the distance multiplied by two. So it's if you, if you stretch one meter, it will be two newtons. If you, if you stretch half a meter, it will be one newton. If you stretch meters it will be four newtons so that's what elasticity coefficient is and we also need a uh, friction which is 0 0.1 so this is a ratio between uh, G okay if you have certain force of the weight you have to multiply it by this um, friction coefficient to get the force of a friction which prevents the movement of the uh, of the body. Sometimes we differentiate between static friction when the object actually is sitting and it needs initial effort to move it. Uh, from dynamic friction, whenever it's already moving, the resistance of uh, 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 to, to to the movement. And usually static is greater than dynamic. It's more difficult to start movement from the uh, some kind of a position, standing position, um, than to continue movement. But let's just for simplicity consider that these static and dynamic are the same. Okay, so what's my problem? My problem is, now whenever I am stretching um, the spring to a certain distance, I will have the force which will force of the spring, which will pull it back to initial equilibrium position. Now, initially, let's assume it's equilibrium, so the spring is not stretched, not squeezed. But now, at the same time, when I stretch it to a certain um, position, not only the spring will uh, uh, attempt to pull it back, also the friction will prevent it to move, right? So if I, now this um, force of friction is always the same. It's weight times coefficient. So the friction force, F 
friction is equal to mu times m times g. m is a mass, g is acceleration of the free fall, so m times g is the weight, and times mu gives me the force. The force is always constant, and it always prevents the movement. Now, the spring when I, whenever I'm stretching it to certain distance, if you multiply this distance by the coefficient of efficiency, it will give it also the force. So my problem is, what's the maximum distance I should move this particular um, body so the spring will have enough force to initiate the, um, the movement? Because if I will just move it just very, very little, my force of the friction will be exactly the same. My uh, spring pulling force, pulling back to the equilibrium, will be very small because this distance I'm stretching very small. But the greater I stretch, the greater the force of the spring. So I can actually manipulate with the position um, so the spring will have different force, the force will be stronger the further I will move it from the equilibrium. But the friction is exactly the same, so I'm looking for a specific position, maximum position, I can stretch without um, spring being able to move it back. So again, if I'm uh, stretching too little, spring will not be strong enough to pull back because the force force of the uh, friction will prevent it. So when exactly will be that maximum distance I can move um, where uh, my, my spring will not be able to uh, pull it back? Well, obviously um, my uh, force of the spring depending on uh, x If x is a distance I'm stretching, then the force of the spring, which obviously depends on the x, would be equal to uh, k times x. That's the meaning of the Hooke's law. The distance I'm stretching times coefficient of elasticity, that's the force. Now, this force will be very small when x is small. But the bigger is x, the bigger is force. So I'm looking for the maximum when it, the force will be equal to this uh, force of the uh, friction. So basically, I have to resolve this uh, uh, equation from which x is equal to mu mg divided by k, which is equal to. 0 0.3 times math uh, times uh, mu is mu is 0 1 sorry mu is 0 1 times mass is 0 3 times g is 9.8 divided by 2 which is equal to 270 to 94 to 94 thousand, so it's 0 0.294 divided by 2, which is equal to 0 0,147, which is, we're talking about meters, right? Equals 147 millimeters. So under these conditions, I have to move my, um, uh, my object no more than 147 millimeters in order to spring not being able to move the body back. If I will stretch it more than 147 millimeters, then the spring will, be, uh, will have sufficient um, uh, force to move it back. How much back? It's a different question, but that would be actually a second problem. Okay, that's the answer to the first problem. Now, the second problem it has the same setup. Okay, now I'm looking for another distance I have to stretch. Now, if I will move it further than 147, 
let me just write 147 millimeters. It's, by the way, it's called critical distance. And there is a special letter lambda which I'm using. So that's the critical distance. Before that, before that critical distance, my movement will not initiate uh, the um, pulling back. Starting from uh, just a little greater than 147, my spring will be sufficiently strong to start movement. How much farther? Well, not much. Because as soon as my spring will be, uh, it, it will start moving back to the original. It will cross 147 millimeters boundary. But then, after that, the strength of the spring will not be sufficient because we are shortening spring. So the, the pulling back str uh, strength will not be sufficient to move it much further. So it will move just a little bit beyond this point and stop. So my point is, how far I have to really move it uh, uh, outside, so the spring will initiate movement, but then it will be strong enough all the way until this uh, body will reach the equilibrium point and stop. That's what's interesting, it's stop. What it means? It means that the energy which has been accumulated by moving my uh, object to the right, uh, potential energy of the spring, will be spent completely on the way from that position back to the equilibrium. And then the, uh, th this object will stop, which means there is no uh, kinetic energy and no potential energy. No potential energy because it's equilibrium point, and, uh, and the spring has no potential energy in equilibrium point. And kinetic energy will be zero because I, I'm saying that the, the condition of this particular problem is the body should stop, the object should stop at that point. So it's all about energy. Again, as soon as we stretch the spring, it accumulates the uh, potential energy. As soon as we let it go, potential energy will start converting into kinetic energy of the movement. So potential energy is diminishing because the spring will be shorter and shorter from the squeezed position but kinetic energy will still be something whatever the kinetic energy is but energy will be spent to friction because the friction will have to do some work this is a uh, constant um, force of friction so on the way from that stretch position to the neutral position this force will always be working against the movement so energy will be spent. So the idea is to find out what's the potential energy whenever I'm stretching to a certain distance. And then that same distance should be used to calculate the work which, fr which, friction, uh, which friction force will perform. And just equate them. And that would be my equation. Okay, so how can I calculate the potential energy of the spring when it's being stretched? Well, I did address it in the lecture, um, but let me just talk about this again. Um, let's consider this is your spring. And you have stretched this particular body to a distance x, and then x plus dx. So dx is infinitesimal. Um, uh, infinitesimal increment of the distance. Now, whenever my object is at position x, the force of the spring, which depends obviously on this position, is equal to uh, coefficient of elasticity comes the distance increment. So this is zero. And this is x. So my force obviously depends on the distance x. Now, as always in physics and mathematics, we are assuming that on this infinitesimal um, increment of the distance, my force is the same. Um, and so my 
work which this force should actually perform on this distance um, should be differential of W of X is equal to F spring of X times GX. So the force times the distance, that's the work. So the force, I assume, is the same on this particular infinitesimal distance, which is equal to this. And then force I multiply by the distance to give my work. And this is only a differential of the work, an infinitesimal increment of the work uh, which spring is doing whenever I'm moving an object from x to x plus dx. How should I do, how should I calculate um, my work if I would like to stretch it on a distance a? Well, I have to integrate it from 0, from 0 to a, which is basically a summation of these infinitesimal number of infinitesimally small uh, pieces of uh, distance and infinitesimally, sm infinitesimally small increments of, of the work. Okay, so what is this? This is integral from 0 to a. Um, f is this, it's a very simple integral. Now, um, this is a definite integral. To, to get it using the Newton's Leibniz formula, I have to have an indefinite integral, which is kx squared divided by 2, because the derivative of this is kx. k is a multiplier. The derivative of uh, x squared is 2x divided by 2 would be x. So this should be substituted from 0 to a. So I substitute the first one, a, and mon minus the second one. But the second one is 0, so it would be just uh, total work, uh, which depends on uh, a, would be equal to k a squared divided by 2. And that's all I need right now from the spring. Now, this is the work which spring is doing. Well, against the force of spring, we are doing by stretching the spring. So we have stretched the spring by distance a. And that's the potential energy which we are giving to this particular object because we are spending our energy to overcome the resistance of the spring. So we are basically transferring our energy, working by stretching the spring and we are actually giving it to the body. This object now, stretched by the distance a, has this amount of potential energy. Okay. Now, whenever I let it go and the spring will start pulling back, my condition is that this same energy should be completely spent on the way back to the position uh, of zero, uh, to equilibrium position. Now, this energy is spent to a friction. Friction has always the same constant. This is the constant, uh, constant force. So to find out the work which friction is doing, I, I have to just multiply this constant force by the distance. Well, distance is A. So my, uh, uh, my work which friction course performs is mu mg uh, times distance, which is A. So this is the work which friction performs on the way back to equilibrium. And it should be is exactly equal, so the kinetic energy would be zero at the end of the point, no speed. And the potential energy is zero because it's equilibrium point. So it should be equal to the potential energy accumulated by uh, the object when I stretch the spring. And that's the equation. And the A is an unknown uh, variable. So we'll just solve this equation, which is very simple. A can be cancelled out. So A is equal to 2 mu mg divided by k, which is equal to <coughs> Well, I didn't write it down, 
but this lambda was equal to uh, mu m g divided by k. So it's twice as much. Very interesting, right? So the critical distance is this, which is 147. And the distance which is supposed to be such that the object will move back to the exactly to the equilibrium point where it started is twice as much. So let me just calculate it. So it's 2 times mu, which is 0 0.1, times uh, mass times acceleration, divided by uh, 2, which is equal to, uh, so it's 3 times uh, 0 0.294 meters. 94 millimeters, which is twice as much as this one. So, what's interesting is, whenever I am stretching beyond the critical point, and I did actually talk about this in the lecture, my spring will start pulling back, and it will stop on a point which is symmetrical to a critical point. So, this is lambda, critical point, so this is the beginning, this is 0, and this is A. So if I'm stretching it twice the critical distance, it will go back symmetrically relative to this. If I stretch it greater, it will go uh, beyond the 0 point, so it will start oscillating. Now, if it's within, uh, from, from lambda to, to twice lambda, it will just go back maximum to a zero. Uh, it, it, if I stretch it less than two lambda, it will stop symmetrically. If, if I stretch it greater than two lambda, it will go here and then it will start oscillating because on this side it will be repeating the same thing relative to the critical position on this side. Well, basically that's it. These are two problems. Um, I do suggest you to read the same two problems on the website on unisor.com. You have to go to uh, Physics 14's um, course. This is the part which is called Waves, and uh, the topic is Mechanical Waves. Now, in the Mechanical Waves topic, you have lots of lectures, and this is the problem number two within the Mechanical Oscillation um, uh, topic. That's it. Thank you very much and good luck.